Hey all, it's Webcam Parrot here with another video, this time on H.P. Lovecraft's vast cosmology and the strange gods, aliens, and unknowable horrors that reside within it. As I covered in a previous video, I'll be going forward with the understanding that Yogg-Sothoth is the supreme being of the verse and not Azathoth, as that does change the way that things are organized quite a bit. As I also said in that video, I've read at one point or another everything of Lovecraft's that was ever published, including all of the accessible letters that he wrote, so I do like to think that I know what I'm talking about. But let's get into the video. Starting from the very bottom with a humble understanding of the physical universe in a surprisingly important short story called The Trap. In The Trap, we see that an occult wizard from 200 years ago, known as Alex Holm, has created a special mirror that can be accessed or activated as a trap to suck anyone nearby into a fourth dimensional space. Inside of this space, death cannot reach the occupants and they will never age so long as they are there, but more importantly, we find out that the way this special fourth dimension was accessed was using a special quality of reflections, and in this same story, it stated that all dimensions beyond the regular three can be accessed through reflections in this way. It's important to note here that what Lovecraft means by dimension is a very specific term, because unlike most authors, Howard was quite well educated when it came to things like mathematics and physics, which is part of why his stories and cosmology are so compelling in my opinion. Dimension in this case refers to the dimensions of an object, things like length, depth, or width, and it's not the same as, for instance, time, which is sometimes called a dimension, or other alternate universes, which in some stories are sometimes referred to as dimensions as well. So this mirror world is like literally adding another axis to something beyond the usual length, depth, and width. We see this concept expanded upon in Through the Gates of the Silver Key, when Yogg-Sothoth reveals the ultimate mystery to Randolph Carter. Here Carter is told that every example of space, so anywhere there is space at all in the verse, only exists as a fragment or infinitesimal slice of a larger, higher dimensional space. Just like a square can be cut from a cube, a cube can be cut from a fourth dimensional object, and so on up to the reachless heights of archetypal infinity eventually leading to a place from where all things are cut. Effectively, the origin of all possible dimensionality. Considering that we know that all dimensions can be reached from reflections on Earth, just the regular physical universe in the Cthulhu Mythos should be on this scale. To put this in another way, it's also stated that there are infinity of directions besides up, down, forward, backwards, and left, right within the universe. We even see that some sections of what might be the physical universe are thought to be beyond even this dimension scale and are described as formless, which is basically a textbook definition for what we would call outerversal, for those who are aware of that. There are quite a lot of diverse beings and gods that live here, including, of course, Great Cthulhu, but also the Elder Things and their own gods, like Gathanatoa, who is incredibly powerful himself as well as various other alien races, including the great race of Yith and the fungi from Yugoth, the Migo. Beyond even this structure is a special world known as the Dreamlands, accessible through sleep and dreaming. In the story Hypnos, we are told that the Dreamlands are beyond matter, time, and space, and that what is known of the universe is merely like the bubble blown from the jester's pipe of the Dreamlands. We also see that in The Trap, the two characters, one of which is trapped in a higher dimensional realm, are still able to communicate and understand each other by speaking within dreams, where it's stated that the dreamer sees the person stuck in the trap as their trans-dimensional self. Uh, obviously meaning that it doesn't matter how higher dimensional they are, as long as they're in the dreamlands, they can both see each other and understand each other just fine. Uh, which is just more proof for why the dreamlands ought to be superior to the physical universe, if that wasn't clear enough anyway. 
part of the dreamlands is constituted by a far more profound and expansive version of the earth and the universe and so where you decide to dream is important if your physical body is on earth you'll start near the dreamlands of earth if you fall asleep on yugoth you'll begin in the dreamlands of yugoth there are a number of regular beings and sleepers that live on these lowest rungs of the dreamlands, but more proficient and powerful dreamers are able to transcend deeper into this world. It's also stated that the old ones, sometimes called the great ones, uh, not to be confused with the great old ones, which are completely different, are stated to be undimensioned and are basically dreamers that live in Kadath, which seems to be in the dreamlands. Even fairly shallow areas of the dreamlands, like this region close to the city of Selaface, can contain infinite regions on this scale within them very easily. This location of infinite size was actually created by the dreamer Karains, and despite it taking him 40 years to journey back to this dream city in the waking world, for the people there it seemed as if no time had passed at all. After achieving an even deeper dream than this, through the use of smoking weed, yes, Lovecraft characters get more powerful by doing drugs, Karains traveled to the dreamland of an entirely different universe, one without form, and the gas cloud being he met there told him that he was currently outside of what he called infinity, and that this being had never heard of planets or organisms before and instead identified Karains as one from the infinity where matter, energy, and gravitation exist. However, it of course goes far beyond this. For instance, Hypnos and the narrator of a story of the same name would journey through the dreamlands in a way that could not be described with the usual experiences of space and time, which the narrator tells us have no definite or distinct existence. Instead, only being able to describe this travel vaguely as soarings or plungings. They traveled and transcended up through various layers, each of them seeming like their own dream to the former. And Hypnos believed that even at this stage, he was powerful enough to rule everything that existed and that he could control the destinies of all living things. Continuing on, both of them transcend through limitless vacua beyond all thought and entity, passing through barrier after barrier separating these infinite levels, seeing perceptions of infinity that at the time filled them with joy. Each of these vacua and realms are likely the other more distant dreamlands that Carter tells us about in Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, that he thinks are particularly difficult to reach even in comparison to just reaching the dreamlands at all. Even just passing one of these layers would constitute something that we would call high outer versal, but all infinity of them adds up to a tier that we are currently calling extraversal on character stats and profiles, which isn't really relevant to this video, but there are some viewers that I know will be glad to hear that. For those of you that have seen my first DC cosmology video, Everything, like everything I mentioned in that video, all the way up to the Leviathan of Stories, is roughly equivalent to where we are right now in the Cthulhu Mythos. So that kind of shows you the difference in scale between DC and the Cthulhu Mythos. The Cthulhu Mythos is just crazy big. We're about like halfway through, not even. And for that matter, this is about where I would place the warp from Warhammer 40k as well. Eventually they reach the end of this climb at a far thicker, more difficult to cross barrier that the narrator tells us is incalculably beyond the entire journey they have taken already. Only Hypnos is able to cross this barrier and the narrator returns to the waking world. However, crossing this last barrier would be the undoing of Hypnos as he saw something horrible beyond comprehension there. For years afterwards, the two of them tried to avoid sleep at all costs, living in fear at all times. Eventually, however, it would all catch up to Hypnos, who would fall deeply asleep, only to be bathed in a horrible red-gold light that not only turned him into a statue, but seemed to change the narrator's entire life to the point that no one believed he had ever been a friend of Hypnos at all. What Hypnos seems to have seen is the court of Azathoth, 
as another dreamer, Randolph Carter, takes a very similar trip in Dream Quest of Unknown Kadeth. He is being given a ride through the Dreamlands by a Shantak, uh, one of Nihilathotep's minions, and kind of a leathery, bat-like creature that serves as a mount and way of travelling around for residents of the Dreamlands. Carter, believing that he is being taken to the Great Ones, however, realises that he has been tricked, and that he is really being taken to the court of Azathoth, and is currently inside the Ultimate Chaos. Realising this, he jumps off the back of the creature and falls through a similar infinite collection of Dreamland Vacua that we saw Hypnos travel through earlier. To add to this, it's also stated that Azathoth and his court are outside of the ordered universe, where no dreams reach, that last amorphous blight of nethermost confusion which blasphemes and bubbles at the centre of all infinity. It's again stated later that Azathoth resides in unhallowed pits, which no dreams can reach. Here we can find the other gods, sometimes called the Outer Gods, like Nihilethotep, which the Great Ones are far weaker than and are terrified of. We also find the Hunting Horrors here, which are servants of Nihilethotep, and it's heavily implied that Nodens and his Nightgorns could reach this place too, especially since they seem to be stronger than the Hunting Horrors. Although there really is no good reason to come to the Ultimate Chaos, as it's just that, a roiling infinity of chaos and monsters, where Azathoth sits as the Lord of All, as the creatures around him dance to the horrific playing of a demonic flute. Just going there is enough to drive immensely powerful beings like Hypnos mad, and merely witnessing the gods there killed him and turned him to stone. It's also stated at the end of the story, Nihilathotep, that the ultimate chaos exists beneath space, in unlighted chambers beyond time, and that it is the graveyard of the universe where scoured worlds and ruined planets can be found. The gods that reside here are sometimes called the Ultimate Gods, and Nihilathotep is their soul. These gods are said to be blind, voiceless, tenebrous, and mindless as they dance to the foul music there. Despite making it literally inside of Azathoth's realm, Carter still needs a special key to go beyond the first gate, and cannot reach it through the Dreaming alone. In fact, despite both Randolph Carter and Hypnos, as well as several others, having travelled to and reached Azathoth's court several times before, and the characters in this story being well aware of that fact, it's still stated that no human since ancient times had never crossed that final border that the Silver Key leads to. So these realms are absolutely beyond the court of Azathoth. And as I've talked about in a previous video, it is just clearly stated that Yogg-Sothoth knows the gate, Yogg-Sothoth is the gate, Yogg-Sothoth is the key and guardian of the gate. Past, present, future, all are in Yogg-Sothoth. Once there, he is completely baffled by the realm he finds, which contains a trans-dimensional extension of the Earth, and is currently in the presence of the Ancient Ones, avatars of Yogg-Sothoth, the strongest of which is named Uma Atawil. Together these beings focus their powers and energies to summon the Ultimate Gate. In order to do this, it's stated that they enter a new and peculiar type of sleep, and again, Carter is a proficient dreamer that has nearly dreamed all the way to Azathoth, and he still believes this, again implying that this is utterly beyond the dreamlands. Finally, Carter passes through the ultimate gate and turns back, realising that there aren't just two gates, but a vast number of them, and that he had essentially skipped from the first gate to the last gate thanks to the Ancient Ones. In fact, he comes to realise that there are an infinite number of these gates, and that each of them is another version of himself, some monstrous and horrible. In this place, Carter's understanding of self and identity are completely obliterated, and he is left stunned and horrified by that realisation. 
only for that utmost horror to be amplified further once he is made to merge with a strange force of personality that is both a part of him and coexistent with all time and space. This feeling only vanishes in the presence of yogg Sothoth, the All-in-One. It is then that Carter is shown the ultimate mystery, which reveals that the gods of Earth, which are the Great Ones, are called little, small, empty, and petty. Bear in mind that these same gods live in Kadath, usually, which is deep in the dreamlands, and they have an alliance with the outer or other gods and Azathoth's court, and can definitely travel there, but are thought of as basically nothing on this scale in the Ultimate Void. It is revealed to Carter that for the beings here in the Ultimate Void, perspective and change do not exist at all, and that by their will alone, they can choose to experience reality from this ultimate vantage or from any perspective they like at all. You see, all beings are merely one infinitesimal fragment of a greater archetype that Carter merged with earlier, and each of these archetypes then participates in the same way with a greater, supreme archetype that is yogg -Sothoth. What this essentially means is that if you think about everything I've explained in this video, the vast dimensionality of the physical universe, all the infinity of the dreamlands that Hypnos traversed, and the barrier that, again, surpassed them all to traverse into the court of Azathoth, the infinity of gates all the way up to the ultimate gate, just to get to the archetypes, that difference, that vast gulf, is again repeated just between the archetypes and Yogg-Sothoth. For it is the all-in-one and one-in-all of limitless being and self, not merely a thing of one space-time continuum, but allied to the ultimate animating essence of existence whole unbounded sweep, the last utter sweep which has no confines and which outreaches fancy and mathematics alike. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. In the future, I would like to do Lovecraft videos focusing on specific types of creatures or beings. So I was thinking I might do a video on the Great Ones and explain what they're like. I might do a video on the Great Old Ones and go through all the stories where they appear. Let me know if that's the sort of thing that people would be interested in. But in any case, I will see you all in the next one.